Welcome back to DXB Today, where tonight's episode is all about food and food tourism right here in the UAE. And it's time to welcome our next guest. We're very excited to be welcoming CEO known for her expertise in the luxury hospitality industry. Please join me in welcoming to the show, Pancelli Mahendra, CEO, Atelier House Hospitality. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much. It's a complete pleasure. Happy to be here. Now, I know you've got your hands in a lot of different parts. We've uh, focused a lot on like the sort of casual experiences here in the UAE, but I want to talk about the five star, uh, let's just call it expensive dining experiences here in the UAE because this is one of the best places for it. Why do people here like to eat gold so much? <laughs> um, I'm wondering there's abundance of it and, and it kind of gives you that level of opulence uh, without literally having a hole in your pocket. So it kind of ticks up all the boxes that you're having a feast, uh, a king's feast, but in, in uh, even though if you were having a proper style, so it's all good for that. And do you see a lot of people traveling to the UAE to experience these types of restaurants, so specifically why they're here? I think absolutely. There is a genre, uh, you know, when people travel to different countries to experience, I think, both style, fine dining and casual. Dubai is a place that you have something for everyone. And it's one, one pit stop right now that you can come experience the whole world, world in one go. And it caters to both the audience of casual and fine dining. And like I said, it's a great luxury market right now to be in. And it caters to all the crowds. Panchali, if you don't mind me just reeling things back a bit, could you tell us a little bit more about Atelier Hospitality? Absolutely. So Atelier House Hospitality is under the umbrella of Alta Maria Group from New York City, uh, under the ownership of Mr. Hamas Fakahani. We started the company in 2017. It's an advisory operating and owning company. So we own and operate close to 32 restaurants worldwide. And uh, yeah, having fun. And we also make sure we make some people's dreams come true. So we consult them on opening their restaurants as well. And Panchali, my understanding is you have some restaurants in the pipeline as well coming up in the near future. Do you want to speak about them a little bit? Absolutely. I think, um, and if I may just say it myself, that it's probably the most anticipated opening of the year. Mm. Uh, we finally, uh, are opening an Emirati, an Arabic and international concept, uh, which will finally pay homage to the local culture and heritage. It's called uh, Garbu, which in Arabic means welcome to my humble abode. And it is in partnership with uh, Tashkil. So we are very excited. Um, it is going to be a place where finally we will be able to give that attention to the local Emirati cuisine, Arabic cuisine, and what the local kids and, and uh, the people grew up eating and the influences of India and Iran and, and, and the spice routes that happened. So we're very excited for that opening. My goodness, it does sound amazing. I wanted to ask you as well, we were touched on it with Josh earlier and with Ahmed who was here before about how this you know, culinary scene has changed so much even in those last five years, mainly since Faris arrived, obviously. <laughs> why, why do you think that's changed so much and what is it that you've seen change in those last five years? So I've been here for 13 years and by the time when I came in the Zuma La Petit Maison, I'd opened a restaurant called Kabar, the fine dining sector was coming up. And then come 2013 and 14, with, with the, the movement, there was a lot more QSRs and casual dining opening. And now we see again an influx of fine dining coming in together. Why? There's a paradigm shift of a lot more homegrown. And I'll tell you why, because we were just having the, even the conference with Dubai Tourism. Two years back, the wave was around 1.9. So that means somebody went out to dine in a week 1.9 times, and it has gone up by 60%. So you're almost close to three times. So I think after pandemic, people started going out more, experiencing more. So there's somebody going three times a week to dine out in this city. That means the demand is there. And I think this is what the fulfillment was that people started realizing that uh, this F&B is a space that is being experienced a lot. Plus, um, what shift am I seeing is, yes, there is a lot of international brands coming in, but with the support of SME, I see a lot more homegrown concepts popping up now and in the near future. Uh, we, are, we are able to understand the local palette a lot more. There is a lot more adventurous nature to people to be able to go take that step and let's say, let's do it in-house instead of bringing international brands in here. And I like to support that because I'm a homegrown brand company too, because, you know, when I go to a city, I want to go and eat that restaurant. It kind of kills the vibe when you have to bring that and put everything in Dubai. And then you're like, why am I going to London or Paris to eat here because I have it right next door? Loses that brand value. So I think what is happening is a lot more homegrown. And, and Josh is here, he'll probably agree. He's got all his 20 Absolutely. restaurants here going, <laughs> popping them up every day. So yeah. Yes. Oh, it's amazing. I wanted to ask you very quickly, because we've only got about 30 seconds left. Yes. With that sh the, the shift in the last five years then, what do we see in the next five? 
Um, absolutely sustainability. That's the word of the decade right now, but I think more than sustainability will be a lot more self-sufficiency. And I think that is what we're trying to make it through uh, Garbu. There will be um, a lot more experiment towards international cuisines coming together. For example, quickly I'll tell you, we, I just did the world's first Indian Japanese concept called Inja, and it has been a huge wave in India. So I think this is what people are going to start doing is experimenting different cuisines, concepts, cultures, and heritage. Panchali, thank you so very much. I, I'm sure all of us here are getting really hungry just thinking about that new restaurant that you have in the pipeline. So thank you for joining us and explaining My everything pleasure. in life. My pleasure. Thank you. Now, Katie's got a little something for Josh right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, don't worry, it's safe. Katie, <laughs> why don't you tell us a little bit more about DXB and 60? <laughs> Absolutely. Te Louis knows exactly how to terrify all of our guests, apparently. Josh, uh, we're going to do the DXB and 60, and this seems like it's a surprise to you. This wasn't on the script. No, it's not on the script for a good reason. 60 seconds, quick fire questions but they're all about you, so you should know the answers. So we're gonna have 60 seconds on the clock, starting in three, two, one, let's go. If you weren't working in the F&B industry, what would you be doing? A luxury yacht broker. You've thought about that question before. <laughs> what was your first job? Uh, my first job was actually gardening. I worked for a company called Garden Force locally. I was about 15 years old. Like mowing yeah. lawns and stuff? Yeah, yeah, Amazing. maintenance, yeah, yeah. Do you have a motto in life and in work? Um, I don't actually, but I think, you know, live life to the full probably works. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if you had a superpower, what would it be? I'd love to fly. Oh. Flying would be incredible. Taxis are coming. <laughs> That's cool. looks at everyone going, right? right? <laughs> it would Why? be incredible. Why? It Why? would. Uh, favorite travel destination for food? For food? Um, oh, I've got to say London hometown okay. like now it's a destination for me yeah that's they make fair. a mean yeah. yorkshire pudding that's yeah. fair. <laughs> otherwise paris is great okay that's fine yeah. right, uh last question why dubai uh dubai opens so many opportunities for us just personally and professionally uh it's an amazing city the food scene is insane and it it provided great opportunity for us so yeah we love it out here well that was josh craddock in 60 seconds josh thank you so much for being with us today and being our co-host thank you very much for having me it's been great lovely uh, to meet you all. been lovely to meet you as well Panjani. thank you thank so you. much for being on dxb today thank you we'll see you soon hopefully absolutely in one of your restaurants, let's maybe? go you said we have 50 <laughs> restaurants to choose from amongst them <laughs> i cannot wait but for right now don't go anywhere because katarina is going to be in the studio very very soon playing us into the night